Today our instructional video is going to model two-step mole conversions. Two steps in the fact that we are going to travel at least two roads in solving the problems. Tools we have out is the worksheet that I'm asking you called two-step mole conversions. We have a mole map given to us that's going to help us fight or find our journey and then of course a periodic table when we need to find molar masses and write chemical formulas. I also have my calculator out and you'll be uh, hitting with me as we problem solve for two-step mole map problems. Reading through our first example under our two-step mole conversion practice page, the letter A. We are given 64.3 grams of lead to bromide. We want to know how many formula units there are. When I think about what I'm told, I'm given, given the number 64.3 grams. This is my unit that's given and I want to go to the number of representative particles called formula units. On our mole map, we're given a mass. We want to go to the number of particles. I clearly see there is not a direct road that connects the world of mass measured in grams and the number of representative particles, although I do see a pathway to get there. To go from mass into the mole, the conversion factor says we're going to need the molar mass of our compound. We'll put one mole over the molar mass to move from the scale into the mole. Once there, we can head out to the world of representative particles, of which formula units represents our compound called lead to bromide. We'll divide to head in, we'll multiply to head out. A two-step mole conversion. Let's begin as we always do by writing our number, which here is 64.3. The unit given is grams and the compound lead to bromide. Lead, with its symbol PB, lives in the heartland of I wouldn't know your charge without the help of a Roman numeral. The lead, Roman numeral 2, is telling me to use lead as a positive 2 charge. Bromide is a monoatomic ion, its symbol BR, carrying a negative 1 charge. So when I crisscross, lead to bromide, PB, BR2. The building block of this compound is a formula unit. Formula units are when we take metals to nonmetals, the building block of ionic compounds. We will need to go into the mole using molar mass and then back out to the world of particles. Those particles we're counting formula units. So on our calculator, we're going to need to find the molar mass. In our first conversion step, I want to cancel grams of lead to bromide and I want to go into the mole. That conversion right here is called molar mass. And that's us on our periodic table looking up gram atomic mass. Lead has a gram atomic mass of 207.2. .2. Yes, I'm going to carry the .2. It's not close enough to a whole number to just simply round it away. Bromine has an atomic mass of 79.9. So I'm going to add 79.9 times 2 because I see that there's two of them in our formula. PBBR2. So when I find the molar mass, I'm finding 367 grams for every one mole. This becomes my conversion factor as I can cancel my gram unit and head into the mole. So, so far with our math, we've moved from the scale where we measure in grams, we divide by molar mass to head in, and this is where we're standing right now. Remember, we want to head out to the world of individual particles. We're counting formula units. When I head out, I can clearly see we have an Avogadro's number in our second conversion. We know that every one mole of our compound called lead to bromide would have an Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. The correct vocabulary word for the compound is a formula unit. It's a compound built of ions, PB, BR2. We divide by molar mass. We multiply by Avogadro. Hit with me so we get used to the key sequence. 
64.3, the number of grams of lead bromide, divided by the molar mass we found, 367, multiply by Avogadro, 6.02 times 10 is the E key, 23rd power. And if your screen matches mine, 1.05 times 10 to the 23rd. The number, the unit, the label. 1.05 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of lead to bromide. We moved from the scale where we measured in grams into the mole and back out to the number of particles. A two-step mole problem. Let's find the journey in the next one, letter B. We're given 5.4 liters of carbon dioxide. The given looks like liters. It's the liter unit that we'll start at. We want to go to grams of our carbon dioxide. Our given unit is liter. We want to know, car, uh, we want to know grams of the carbon dioxide. If our given unit here is a volume unit, the liter, and we want to end with the mass of carbon dioxide, I can clearly see there's no direct road between volume and mass, but I do see a pathway. I'm going to divide to head in, and I'm going to multiply to head out. To change volume of gas into moles of gas, we use our molar volume conversion, 22.4 liters. To go from moles back out to the scale, we see that we need the molar mass. We divide by molar volume, multiply by molar mass. Let's begin setting that journey up. Our number, 5.4, the unit given is liter, and our chemical formula for our molecule of carbon dioxide, 5.4 liters CO2, our given quantity. We want to head into the mole using molar volume. We know that one mole of any gas at standard conditions would occupy a volume of 22.4 liters. See how liters are canceling? We're in the heartland of our mole map, the mole. So step one, we put liter into mole. We used molar volume. Step two, we want to go out to the scale, moles out to the mass. We need molar mass to do that. One mole of carbon dioxide on the bottom, so moles cancel. We need a molar mass of CO2. Carbon with its gram atomic mass of 12. Oxygen with its gram atomic mass of 16. But I see two of them in the formula. So I'll add a carbon, which is 12 plus 16 times 2, the weight of two oxygens, and we're finding a molar mass of 44 grams. Step 1, we canceled liters. Step 2, we canceled moles, and I'm now at the mass of carbon dioxide. Hit with me. Be my calculator, buddy. 5.4, whoops, clear screen, 5.4, divided by our molar volume, 22.4, times 44. And I'm finding an answer, 10.61 grams of carbon dioxide. Number, unit label, an A-plus answer. Liters divided by molar volume, multiply by molar mass, and we've changed volume into the grams. Let's try another. The letter C. 25 grams of sulfuric acid to molecules. What are we given? We're given a mass in a gram. We want to go to the number of molecules. What does that journey look like on your road map? Given a gram, we want to know particles. I don't see a direct road, but I do see a pathway. If I go from grams into the mole, and then out to the representative particles, called a molecule. We divide to head in, we'll multiply to head out. To move from mass to mole, we'll need to add up the molar mass of our compound. And in the second step, we can see that it will involve Avogadro's number. We have 25 
grams of sulfuric acid. The acid rules remind me ic comes from eight, the polyatomic ion sulfate, SO4, negative two. Sulfate with its negative two, turn it into an acid by attaching to hydrogen, we get H2SO4. Our beginning conversion, 25 grams of H2SO4. We want to cancel grams and go into the mole. We need to add the molar mass, two H's, an S, and four O's. So reminding us we have hydrogen, whoops, with its molar mass of one, sulfur, which will be 32, and oxygen, we'll say, is 16. We have two H's, we have one S, and we have four O's to add together for the molar mass. Hydrogen weighs one, but there's two of them in our formula, so two H's plus sulfur with its atomic weight of 32 plus 16, the atomic weight of oxygen, but there's four, so I go times four, and I get a molar mass of 98. So there's the first conversion, adding the formula weight or molar mass of H2SO4. Now remember, all we've done so far is to move from the scale into the mole. We have one more step. We want to count those individual building blocks. The term here, when all of our elements are nonmetals, the compound category falls under molecules. We have an Avogadro's number of molecules, and I'll abbreviate that, MLC, in every one mole of our compound called sulfuric acid. Step one, we canceled grams by using molar mass. Step two, we canceled moles by using Avogadro's number. And let's hit for a common answer. 25 divided by 98 times Avogadro. We divide by molar mass to head into the mole. We multiply by Avogadro to go out to the individual particles called molecules. I'm finding 1.54 times 10 to the 23rd power. My unit would be molecule and my label sulfuric acid. Let's try a letter D. Here we're given 6.5 times 10 to the 24th formula units. We'd like to go to grams. The compound we're given is sodium chloride. Our given quantity is a formula unit. It's the type of individual particle. We want to know the mass. We're starting here at the individual particles called formula units. We count those individual particles. We head into the mole and out to the scale. We always divide to head in, we multiply to head out. We'll use Avogadro in step one, we'll use molar mass in step two. There's no direct road between the two, but I do see a pathway heading into the mole and then back out. We'd start by writing 6.5 times 10 to the 24th our number. The unit is formula unit and of what? Sodium with its plus one charge, chloride with its minus one, simply NaCl. Starting at the individual particles, we know that there would be an Avogadro's number of formula units of table salt in every one mole of our salt, sodium chloride. We divide by formula units using Avogadro's number. So far we went from formula unit into the mole. Following Avogadro's pathway, we're dividing to head in. Now to go out to the grams, we're going to need molar mass. We have to add up an Na, sodium, we'll call that 23, 22.98. Chlorine, I'm going to carry that decimal, 35.45, so I'll call that 35.5. Sodium at 23, 35 and a half for chlorine, molar mass of 58.5. So we have 58.5 grams of sodium chloride contained in every one mole of sodium chloride. Step one, 
we cancelled our individual particle called formula units. Step 2, we cancelled our mole unit and arrived at grams. All we have left to do is solve. 6.5 E24 Divide by Avogadro 6.02 E23 Times the molar mass of 58.5 631.64 is my calculator answer. Is yours matching? We label that grams of sodium chloride. And one more in our practice and we'll have an A-plus paper. Here we're given the number of molecules and want to go to liters. We're given the amount of molecules of a gas called sulfur dioxide and we want to know its volume. Given a particle, let's go to volume. What does that path look like? Given the individual particles of sulfur dioxide, I want to know the size of the balloon, the volume. I don't see a direct road, but I do see a pathway. I can divide to head in using Avogadro multiply to head out using the molar volume of 22.4. Avogadro dividing, molar volume brings us up north. Let's try that out. 3.50 times 10 to the 24th, our number. Molecules, I abbreviate MLC. And sulfur dioxide, listen to those prefixes, sulfur dioxide, SO2. We want molecules to cancel and we want to go into the mole. Avogadro will get placed on the bottom. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of sulfur dioxide. Cancels molecules and brings us to the heartland of our mole map. The central calculation of all, the mole. We use molar volume to head up to the balloon. 22.4 liters is the size of any gas at standard conditions for every one mole. Step one cancels molecules. Step two cancels moles and we've derived at the volume of our gas at standard conditions. Let's hit together. 3.5 E24 Divide by Avogadro 6.02 E23 times our molar volume unit of 22.4 and that balloon is quite large isn't it? 130.23 liters of SO2. We've modeled five examples of two-step problems, giving you plenty of opportunity to find examples as you try some on your own. Your assignment, very similar to what we just practiced, you have six that I'm asking you to work by yourself as your assignment for the next time we meet. That's where we'll begin to check our answers.